Boom, and we are live with another episode of the Brownwater Banter Podcast. My name is Jared Seymour. My name is Joey Cates. That's right, and we got a great show for you today in the studio. Back uh, once again, first time was episode 14. We looked it up. Brian Butler's in the house. He's going to be Look talking with guy. us today. Look at that guy. There he is. <laughs> Look, man, about uh, aquaculture, yeah. raising fish, growing plants, all kind of craziness little, today, little right? Bit of everything. Yeah. Uh, we didn't even have video the last time you were on the show. That's how long ago it was. Early 80s. Like, the 1960s. <laughs> the early 80s. We looked it up. It was January of 2019. So, it was. It was. Uh, we've upgraded a little bit since then. We can talk about that too. But uh, before we jump into everything, like we always do, we want to thank the people that support the show right out of the gate. I bet you know who I'm going to say. Dr. Ah. Robbie Williams over at Southern Magnolia Smiles. Uh, if you're looking for a great local dentist, they're located on Washington Avenue in Ocean Springs. Uh, they're on the socials at Southern Magnolia Smiles. Uh, 2023 is a year to keep your mouth clean. Give them a call at 228-215-1202. Thanks, Bob. Yep. Yeah. Our good buddy Jesse over at Hill Tree Marketing. Uh, if you need a website built for any reason, if you're a content creator, small business, uh, doesn't matter. He can take you from nothing to a an award-winning website like he did for us over at brownwaterbanter.com. Professional photography, videography, aerial drone cinematography. He can build a commercial for you. He can handle all the IT side of your website. He's a one-stop shop, and he's local. That's the thing. He's a phone call away. He's not some company you know, somewhere in the U.S. where you can't get a hold of anybody. He's right here in the community. Uh, check him out. He's a real boy. He's a real person. <laughs> check him out at, yeah, real boy. Yeah. Check him out at uh, hilltreemarketing.com. You can see some of the other brands that he's already worked with, and uh, I don't think you'll be disappointed. We appreciate Jesse being a part of the show. Uh, coming up next is Taylor and Cox Law Firm. That's our buddy uh, Tyler right there and Calvin. Uh, Calvin has since moved up to circuit court judge. So Tyler's taken over, and uh, they've been practicing law over in Pascagoula for over 30 years. So if you need legal representation for any reason, uh, they specialize in criminal law, family law, and civil litigation defense. So uh, give them a call over at, uh, uh, at 228-696-0111 and tell them that you, uh, you heard about them from the Brownwater Banter podcast. So uh, that's going to wrap that up. Yep. Um, shit, where do Beat we start? Me. Yeah, where do we start? I don't know. Let's talk about what happened to begin with. I mean, let's, let's go back over it, how you started um, – your program, I mean, what what focus you had and how you got to where you are today. Yeah. Okay, start from the beginning, huh? The big yeah. so the, the we, origin uh, story, baby. No. <laughs> so we, um, I started at Ocean Springs in 2006, and I taught uh, biology, marine aquatics, and things like that for uh, about, I'd say, give or take eight years. And the state approached me and said that uh, they wanted to start an aquaculture program, and would I be interested in fronting all of that, getting it all started and um, working on the curriculum and getting the greenhouses and program and set up and all that kind of stuff. So uh, I agreed. So I made the switch from the uh, education side to the CT side of the classroom and uh, started building greenhouses, started going through our plans. Um, I think in 2019, when I came earlier, we were still on tilapia and we had done our first run of speckled trout. Um, since then we've switched completely off of that. The, um, as we all know, the tilapia are an invasive species and they, uh, take over, take over everything. So they're not something that we want to release. They were an experiment. They worked well, but did y'all any kind it? of, we did not. Yeah. Okay. Everything, everything with that is a pure kill situation. Yeah. So you end up with the same fish year after year after year. Um, they did reproduce, make their own fish. Everything was perfect on that. But the fact of the matter that every time there was a major storm or anything yeah. like that, I, yeah. uh, it was always that fear that um, what if the, you know, the roof blows off the greenhouse and everything flies away, they get flooded, the fish get out into the environment, and then, you know, our estuaries are toast. Yeah. So uh, after That's the crazy. last, uh, after the last time, I can't remember which, uh, which storm it was, there was a named storm that came through and wildlife and fisheries called and said, hey man. Time for them to go. Kill it. And so, you They're know. They're resilient fish too, oh, aren't they? Absolutely you can't kill resilient. Them. <laughs> so the only easiest way to do it, of course, is on ice. And so uh, the students and I just drained every single one of the tanks. Uh, at that time, I only had two greenhouses. So I had one that was absolutely stuffed with the tilapia, and the other one was our speckled trout. And then so um, we pulled them out, put them all on ice. And then to make even more sure, I poured a gallon of bleach in each one of the tanks if there was any floating eggs or anything of that sort to make sure that it was all clear. Um, a hurricane happened. Obviously, nothing happened. It uh it like came right at us and then yeah. hook left yep. and yeah. we didn't even lose power or start a generator or whatever. Um, and so 
we went back and at the point at that point the greenhouses had a uh, a visqueen removable roof on them and so we would take the roofs off i don't know why they made me do it i guess it was a fear of them blowing away yeah. whatever i mean they're 50 posts that are four foot deep in concrete they're yeah. not going anywhere so i did that we went back and uh we're like all right well there's nothing wrong and nothing's damaged um and saw movement in the tanks and i'm like seriously like we poured a whole gallon of bleach into those and tanks, and they were still alive. And the fish were just like feeding off of it, like hulkanizing, like getting <laughs> like more powerful. Like Teenage Mutant Ninja yeah. Turtles, right? Like the yeah. ooze. Yeah, like, that's that's how like uh, they learned Godzilla. To, they, that's how they made Godzilla. They learned to speak way. English. So like yeah. as, when I walked in there, the bleach had changed their DNA. What up, dog? Yeah. <laughs> They're like still here. Yeah, yeah. Like, They're like oh, smoking man, cigarettes. That's, that's yeah. a, well, I don't. You know, we're on school campus. So. Oh, okay. Oh, they were vaping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were vaping. It went back 2009. You know that one. Okay, that wasn't thing yet. Yeah, um, my time so goes. then I said, uh, okay, let's get completely out of that. We switched to catfish for a while. Um, and the catfish are such aggressive growers that they will they will grow quickly, but then they section off in the tanks. So we have 400 gallon tanks. I have 46 of them now. And they would, uh, one would back into a corner and all the other catfish that swim around, he would come out, you know, and try to rocky them and be like and yeah. just like punch at them so freshwater and catfish. So freshwater catfish. Fresh, okay yeah. yeah um and uh they would beat each other up and then you end up with viral disease or uh, any kind of um bacterial infection and things like that from the scuts and the cuts and scrapes and everything that go along with it mm. so we were like okay okay what can we do that would be a um that would be an addition that would actually benefit us so uh a guy uh the gulf coast research lab which i partner with on a lot of things i do uh used to do striped bass studies so the striped bass were a thing that he would run. And so I said, um, where can we get striped bass? Can we do striped bass? And so we uh, decided to start the striped bass project. And it's been running uh, since I was on the show. So we're on year four of that. Yeah. Um, I think the last statistics we've released, uh, 7,500, 8,000 striped bass. Um, so they uh, go back through and we um, get them when they're probably uh, about an inch, maybe inch and a half. And then raise them to, by the time right now, they're seven and a half, eight inches. And then we will tag those fish uh, with keying on it. We'll talk about that a little bit more. But they uh, then we release them back in the wild so people can catch them and things yeah. like that. Striped bass, is, I mean, in the rivers now, they're pretty common. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're, making, common. they're making a pretty good comeback. Um, yeah. They did, uh, I believe it was Jim Franks that did the study for the longest time. And he would he would release them by the masses. I right. don't have the... Um, now, there's... Regular striped bass and hybrids are these hybrids or these are hybrids. These are hybrids. These yes. are hybrids. Okay. That's a difference. And so uh, um, the only thing I know is the lines are broken. The lines are broken on the hybrids, yeah. and um, they are a combination of a uh, correct me if I'm wrong, a white bass and a palmetto bass. Yeah. Um, something along those is lines. That something to make, that somebody uh, did, or that happened in the wild. It did not happen in the wild. The hybrids did not happen in the wild. That's okay. a um, that's a fish that was thrown together and then it's like a labradoodle, right? Like a right, labradoodle, right. yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so the natural striped bass, uh, of course, get huge. So will the hybrids, but they're um, they're just a different breed. They don't naturally hybrids don't naturally occur here. So, but you can release them in the wild and do you know whatever. Yeah. What's what's the process like? What regardless of the species of fish, um, when you raise them in these. The, in your tanks or whatever you have to go through dmr to get approval to release them and uh, then... I, I have, there's a, a kind of like a chain command uh yeah i start with uh, all my freshwater fish start with wildlife and fisheries uh i spoke to the um the agriculture aquaculture guy today uh, and went through the data um he collects all of my uh, release information the release site the, my numbers the sizes everything where mm -hmm. i'm putting them in uh we'll actually put this batch of striped bass down the road at uh the shed right there at the boat launch. Okay. Um, that is their approved release site. It is the closest freshwater barrier, you know, to get them out into the, uh, into Fort Bayou. Mm -hmm. So it just happens to be at the shed. So what we'll do is my students and I will go, uh, I think in this group, I'll have 48 kids and we'll take all of the fish down there and, uh, we'll release fish. And then after we get done, we'll go eat and then go back to school. Sweet. So it works out good for that. So uh, how do you, you – I see pictures all the time of them with the hose coming yeah, out uh, or spraying. Or y'all do that or y'all just put them works, in the water? It works well with the speckled trout. Um, yeah. When the speckled trout are small to be able to do that, all the ones you see shooting out are the speckled trout. The um, the redfish that we're doing now and the striped bass, I'm pretty sure, are going to be too big. So basically it's like, you know – trying to shoot him down the pipe <laughs> right he's going to just bang along the sides and then you're going to be like hey look and there's just dead 700 fish, yeah. fish floating yeah, yeah, yeah. all over the place great job so they, yeah 
So then the you know the lady from Dudley Electric was like, "How are things going?" Yeah, like, you're like, "Could you, you pan know, the camera yeah. away from all the just, dead fish?" Yeah, yeah, just don't, just yeah. don't do get it the there. shit. But, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, everybody get fed. <laughs> yeah. And uh, but so on larger fish like that, we will scoop and do it. Uh, so like out of the tank, process. you scoop yeah. right there. So all so you don't that, have to do like the goldfish at the store. Well, what we do with that? Acclimate is, them. Yeah. yeah. So what we do with that is we take we'll take like a big like water pump and we'll fire it up and put it on there and we'll run water through. Uh, the hauler for probably 30 minutes. So that water is the same um, water they're going into. The yeah. same water they're going into. Same it's the acclimation process. Yeah, yeah. Um, sometimes when we go to that area to shed, it's a slightly brackish. So it tends to break them in. Um, they can live in both fresh and salt. It really doesn't matter. A lot of people are surprised that I grow them in fresh because they do, they can go, uh, they do go out to salt water and stuff. You yeah. can catch, you can catch a trout and a, striped bass in the same hall just like you can a bass yeah that, um, that i didn't really realize that until five or six years ago Pascal fishing the river, river yeah. Yeah. catching yeah. catching bass and then literally the next cast same spot speckle trout because they migrate up i guess right mm -hmm. to, to lay in the winter time and so they're just going well it's not necessarily lay it's more or less to uh get to that warmer water because they uh they can get into that water that's still warm as compared to getting out in the deep where it's cold okay and so then they switch uh you know they're going to go out right. when it gets really cold and then come back in so they'll switch up for that. Okay. Um, so the the striped bass is a project that we've been working on. Um, and this year the uh, DMR is going to promote our taggings. Uh, so this is the most fish we're ever going to tag. I think we got right at um, right at a thousand tags. So I'll tag um, three hundred and whatever three hundred and thirty three of each species. Um, I'll tag three hundred thirty three trout, three hundred thirty three redfish, and three hundred thirty three. Um, Striped bass. Yeah. So that last one, I guess I'll just stick. I, I was sticking my finger. I was waiting. Yeah. I, know, I was, I was, I was, was adding yeah. it. I was like, "What are you gonna do yeah. with the I'll last just one?" Stick yeah. that. Yeah, you go tag itself. Yeah. yeah. The um, <laughs> when you do a perculum tags on the speckled trout, we're gonna do what I call a spaghetti tag and shoot them in the back of the dorsal fin, so you'll be able to see it. Uh, the the ones they do in the perculum are like a little a little metal tag, and so the only problem with those is like you know Joey goes out and catches his usual one or two fish, right, and um. He may catch a trout that has been tagged 10 years ago, but unless he has the specific the wand, wand yeah. he won't even know. So, you know, there's no way to tell. It's a great tracking system, but there's like five wands on the coast. Oh, wow. So, you know, there could you could have caught 25 fish that were raised at the lab, but there's really no way to scan it to be able to know that it was uh, caught there. So mine all have my phone number. The year they graduated, the year the fish were released, the same year as the seniors graduated, and... um the uh, number of the fish. So uh, with the DMR, what they're going to do this year is not only the a thousand tags, but we're also going to get some, um, I don't even know what to call them. They're like a, uh, a beacon tag or a sonar tag or whatever, maybe yeah, a transponder yeah. type tag. And it's just a little, it's a little piece and they cut a slice in the fish, insert it in and then kind of like bandage yeah. it up. I've seen them. And so little glass if, looking things. Yeah. yeah. So if, I'm doing one per tank. So, cause they're expensive. I don't know how much they cost, but the kid can be sitting in class and Track I'll get it. a ping on my phone and be like, Hey, S Steven. Yeah. And he's like, yes, sir. And he's like, you know, like, Hey, your fish just swam under the Biloxi bridge. Yeah. Wow. You know, so, uh, it'll be able to tell you exactly where those number of fish are going, you know? And I'm like, well, what if, you know, the fish gets eaten and they're like, I guess we track the, the bigger fish. Yeah. 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 Like, and hey, then the bigger fish. Oh, and then man, the bigger your, fish. Your fish is in Cuba. Right. Yeah, Sorry. Right, you right. know, like he swam all yeah. the way out there. He got eaten by a dolphin. Yeah, or, or it's like he's, he's in a great white. He's in he's in uh, Gulf Park Estates. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, somebody caught him. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And I have had people that catch, uh, I think, return rate on those. Uh, I'm, I'm 8,000 or so fish we've released. I've had probably 45 or 50 fish been caught. And the uh, people call me and say, hey, you know, I, uh, I caught this fish here. I had the number on it. It's, and I'm like, all right, let me get the number. You know, where did you catch it? Location, things like that. And I can track it back to, you know, the original group. And a lot of times they're caught within the first couple of years. So I can tell the group that is in year two saltwater or year three at the internship that, Hey man, somebody caught your fish. Uh -huh. It grew nine inches yeah. and a pound since you let it go. Um, and I've had people call and say, um, Hey man, I caught a fish, you know, it's got the tag on it and all that kind of stuff. Cause I'll send them a aquaculture shirt, which I see I have on now. Yeah. Uh, I'll send him a shirt and I'm like, Hey man, can you send me a picture? Mm -hmm. And he sent me a picture of the tag. And I was like, I meant the fish. And he was like, no, nah, <laughs> I man, know what I, the tag looks he's like. He's like, no nah, man, I already, already ate it. it. Yeah. 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 I was, he was like, I was filleting it and realized that tag right. was in there. 
And then so I just continued. I was like, well, can you give me an estimate? You know, yeah. like, can you use like a fit in a sauce? But I was like, no, not, not what <laughs> not size. It was good with flour. Yeah, yeah. 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 Not what size skillet you fried it in. Right, I didn't right, know, yeah. you know, the whole thing on that. And so that is a big, uh, a big transition to the project because they can actually do a, um, a full tracking system of the fish to know um, the further so far we actually had ca caught was um, one of the run one of the ones we released in 2000 because uh, peak COVID was like an awful uh, striped bass experience. So, um, you know, everything shut down. Of mm -hmm. course, I still had fish. Right. Um, and so the uh, it was basically like Brian and two greenhouses of just 1500 striped bass. So I was in there like changing water and doing all this other kind of stuff because nobody else can come on site. Right. So I uh, actually had to go get the hauler, get the truck because the fish were just going to keep growing and they started outgrowing the systems mm. and they were just, so you had to do big. some work. I had to do some work. And so uh, I got them all in there and I got everything set up and I was like, all right, we're good. My DO was good. We, everything was perfect, you know, and I got to, uh, got to the release site and I was like, what's that noise? And I like look back and the uh, hose had crimped oh, uh, no. and I looked in the tank and I was like, and so like, R.I.P. R.I.P. What do you mean the hose had crimped? What like the oxygen. That was oh, the oh, thing. Yeah. Uh, the bubbler. Uh, yeah. And how, so, long, how long from, how long, that's not, I guess it doesn't take it, long, no, right? With that many fish. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it's, it's like you unplug it and it's like, and they're dead. Right. They get one so, breath apiece yeah, while it's yeah. running. But the tilapia would have bred and had another batch Absolutely, of kids yeah. already. Yeah, the tilapia would world. have all crawled out and been sitting on the thing, like, <laughs> yeah. fist up in yeah. the air, like, well, you what ready? You yeah. Yeah. Let me yeah. see your phone, um, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get, take a picture. Yeah. Um, and stuff. so uh, so that was – but the, the fact that we've been able to release so many and the kids have uh, done so well with it, not only with the fish, um, but they also have their uh, aquaponic systems that go along with that. Um, so – Right now, they're in the middle of a, uh, we talked about it in 2019, but we're right in the middle of a tomato run. Um, so the kids will basically get all these ideas of what they want to plant. You know, they're like, I really want to plant cantaloupe or cucumbers or watermelon or corn or, you know, whatever the thing may be that they want to plant. And so they plant it. And then all of those things grow slow. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I'll go back to Steven. Steven's over here. His tomatoes are just like. Gigantor. And he's sitting yeah. there and he's like. And I'm like, well, you can do whatever you want to do. So everybody knocks out all of those cantaloupe and all that other kind of stuff and just does peppers and tomatoes because they, they grow, grow the fastest. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, you look in the, I think you shared some pictures earlier yeah, to, where you, right here. Uh, to where you saw the inside of the greenhouse and it, um, it's the roofs up to the roof is in, can you put it up on the thing? Yeah, look, there you go. Oh, no, that's not it. Wrong one. What that's, is that? Uh, that's called an NFT system. We'll get okay, to that. Okay. Um, all right. Well, then I only got, I got that and then I got, it'll again, it'll take a minute. Oh no, we're all good. Um. I hope that's I hope this is right then. This is your tank with uh it looks like Oh yeah. So you can see on the uh the right hand side where oh man, looking good with that bald head. Yeah. Uh yeah. right over there beautiful. with the uh with the tomatoes running up the side right there. That is um they get height, they get everything and they actually hang down the cherry tomatoes hang down like grapes. Yeah. And so they just the kids go and I have just um, eat them during yeah, class. Yeah, and I've I've actually um you know, every so often there'll just be so many of them and they're so good, like cause we grow uh, six different varieties of the cherry tomatoes. You know, we drew a, a yellow, uh, what's called a yellow bell. We grew an orange uh, cherry bomb. We do a red cherry bomb. We do um, Romas. We do the whole, you know, shebang. And the lunch ladies, because we have a um, we have a bar of uh, salad bar that they put out mm. every day. They'll give me six hundred thousand containers, and every so often she'll roll another box, and I'm like, you know. Susie, I'm not even through the first box you gave me, Yeah, yeah. but it's just, you know, the little snap things that you have and the kids, I think they probably pull 10 of those a day Dang. out of the, uh, out of the greenhouse and take them home. And, uh, that's you know, a lot like, of maters. Yeah. yeah. If you don't, I'm like, if you don't need them, you know, we'll give them to somebody, but all of them take them home to the parents and eat them the, yeah. the, for the audio people. You know, they couldn't see that picture, but oh, nice. what is, uh, can you describe that process though? So like, are you, you're using the, the, is it the fish's excrement to yes. fertilize? So what like, it is, walk us is, through that. Um, so the fish actually, you know, they go through a filtration system. Um, the water that goes through it, there's what we, you know, we call a trough. And so the water is gravity fed into that. And then the, um, the, the poops and the peas, as yeah. we call them, yeah. uh, all get trapped in that trough area. And that's where your mechanical filtration happens. So then the water overflows through a filter and goes into your biomedia and that's where our biological filtration happens. Okay. So there is uh, nitrosomas and nitrobacter that live in these um, little plastic spaghetti looking um, noodles mm -hmm. that um, they live on there. And as they're aerated, 
uh, they're flying around in that water and they're attaching to all the nitrate, nitrite and ammonia and breaking that down and making it safe to go back in the water. So we stick a, um, a mechanical pump on the bottom corner of the tank where, um, cause all of your, when the t- fish are swimming and all of your nutrients are flying around, everything settles close to the bottom. Mm-hmm. And so the deeper your, um, your filtration, the deeper your pump is, it can pump, you know, more nutrients up to the plants. So we do, uh, the mechanical filtration that pumps up to the top. And so then it'll, uh, they'll make like a, a lot of the kids will take PVC pipe and cap it and drill holes and it make like a shower sprinkle right. to go across their plants. That water runs through a gravel bed where they put their plants and that feeds everything that goes to the uh, plants. So it's like a water use, compost. Yes. So yeah. we don't use any, we're basically organic except for they will not certify the um, river rock, the uh, river pebbles, because they don't really know where they come from. So we mm-hmm. don't use any uh, additives. The only thing we add is um, Gaucher probably two or three years ago got a new reverse osmosis, uh, re- reverse osmosis system for their um, for their water system. And it basically, uh, you boil or heat the water or you can drain however you want to do it, but it collects that sweat or that, um, stuff off of it. And that's how you pur- purify the water. And then it pulls a lot of the iron and your magnesium and some potassium and things out of the water. So every now and then, if I start to get like a yellowing of the leaves or something, you I'll supplement with it, a, yeah. with an organic iron, uh, supplement that mixes right in the water. It's organic safe, you know, everything for that. Uh, so we'll add that back to the water, but we don't use any fertilizer besides that. Um, any kind of pesticides or bugs or anything, we'll throw in, uh, some, uh, lady, ladybugs to go in and they'll just, I'll order, you know, 50,000 ladybugs. It's like 35 bucks. Really? And it's a steal, so, no, that's, yeah, that's I mean, awesome. it's like a penny of a penny of ladybug. Yeah. Right? And so you just basically give the kids the ladybugs and they put them all in their plants. And over the course of a couple of weeks, they'll run through and just wipe out any kind of uh, white flies, black flies, uh, aphids, anything like that that you have on the plants. And then they'll just. That's way cooler than pesticides. Yeah. yeah. They'll, either, they'll <laughs> either just uh, fly away or they don't have very long of a life cycle. You know, most people think about things like that. And um, ladybugs are like a. I don't know, like a 48 hour, 72 hour, two week lifespan. Yeah. So, you know, it's not like they, they pop up and they're like, dude, he's nine. Yeah. You know, they don't, it's kind of like, that's a, my grandpa. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, no, he's, no, yeah. he's been here for four days. Yeah. 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 Four days. <laughs> right. And so the same thing with, um, dragonflies, you know, dragonflies lives like 48 hours. Mm. So every time I see somebody that's like chasing after one, I was like, dude, the guy has no time. Yeah. yeah. Just let him, him alone. He's trying to yeah. kill him. Yeah. 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 He's, he's only him. got 30 minutes left. Just right. let him roll. Right. And, um, so that's the whole freshwater shebang and you know they'll do uh we've done everything um and that picture you shared earlier was of uh what we're working on now is like a nft system uh it's called nutrient film technique non-fungible tokens yes uh, non- <laughs> non-refundable tokens yeah, yeah. your digital creation yes yeah, yes yeah, yeah. so it's uh it's a new thing we just started it's like super mario brothers but for fish <laughs> um <laughs> do, 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 do. that yeah. yes and so um this was actually an experiment that i had the kids working on in my year two classes and so the way this works is your um, your plants and everything will float on top of the water. And so the water is pumped from one tank into that tank. And then you run aeration all around, which stirs up your, um, your bacteria and your uh, nutrients and everything. And then it gets caught in the back and flushes back out and goes back into the tank. So that is your separation point between the fish and the plants because those tanks are all full of koi. Like I have. Okay. 800 million koi. I would you, love to have know, a koi pond. If you know anybody, like you have a koi pond, you want no, some koi? I would I'm, love yeah, to have okay. a koi well, let's, pond. Let's build one. Let's yeah. do something because I have yeah. more koi than I know what to do with. Really? And so Big ones? Um, uh, I think my biggest is probably eight, eight, eight to 10 inch. Okay. So, I mean, yeah. they eat you know, plants. Don't koi. Uh, but that's the thing. So, so the your separation, separation, the separation allows for those koi not to eat the roots off of the plant because it'll eventually kill them. Mm. And so that picture is um, we do a, uh, marsh restoration project with um, RCU Mississippi State. Uh, so it's called Planet Marsh. So that's all black needle grass and things of those sort, needle cord. And so that is a, um, we grow those in there and then they can say, you know, like um, Joey lives on the water and his whole front of his property has eroded. And so they can come to me and just grab a bunch of plugs and go yeah. bring it to Joey's house and throw them in the ground and they'll restart 
that whole area Sweet. and help to grow that back. Grow the wetlands. And back. so it's just from and it's just from our wastewater. You know, I I dump out uh, the stuff we use. The stuff we dump out from the freshwater tanks is I mean, probably fifty gallons a day, and it's just pure like good stuff. Good stuff. Wow. And so I have a lot of uh, a lot of people in like the Jackson County Garden Club. And those like that, I'll come to work some days and there'll be these gallon jugs just leaned all up against the front of the greenhouse. And I'll just go in there, you know, kind of like milking cows just yeah. go through and hit all the tanks and set them all back out. And the next morning they'll be gone. So they take those and they um, they cut them in half. Yeah. So they'll take like you know a gallon of water to a gallon of that because they're they're so nitrite strong or nitrate strong, whichever one you want to go with. And the phosphorus and everything will burn mm -hmm. the plants. And so they cut them in half and they just pour them directly on their uh on their plants and they just why do you take off why do you have to get rid of the water why are you because uh, it, it's just process of cleaning so all of that um all of that filth and everything that has come extra food feces things like that that collect in the trough is just the tank's way of cleaning itself okay so every day my students go in um like some of the groups that we've had in the past um i'm trying to think some of the new ones that we have that are really good uh we're doing we were we originally planned to uh, do a snapper project at the end, uh, some uh, gray snapper that we we're going to work on. We ended up sticking with the the redfish that we're doing, but the gray snapper were something we were going to work on. So like one of the groups named themselves Bohemian Snapsity. I like it. And, yeah. you know, and then there's uh, the Breckfish Club. Okay. Um, um, what was some of the ones that would be good? Um, uh, if you wouldn't ask me, I don't know. But there's, you know, they come up with the best names. Yeah. You know, Highway to Whale. Uh, you know, it's always... Um, you know, then it was like when the whole Mike Trout thing, you know, they yeah. did a bunch of that. Um, there's just a bunch, yeah, but they yeah. all, so like three or four people work on a tank. So every day they know when they go in, they kind of rotate the project, you know, whatever they're doing, like, you know, Steven, you're on cleaning troughs today. I don't know why I'm on Steven. Yeah. But yeah. Steven's a busy man. He's also doing the podcast back in the room. You know, I right. left him in there. Yeah. Um, and so he'll go in there and clean the troughs and then somebody takes out the two buckets of drained water. Somebody feeds. Uh, we siphon the bottom of the tank a bunch to make sure we don't have any sediment. Uh, you know, rotten food and feces will lead to uh, uh, ammonia spikes in the tank, which can be poisonous or toxic to the fish. And when you're running um, 150 to 200 fish per tank, you know, you got to stay on top of that right. or it will uh, it'll catch up to you eventually. Yeah. Um, we go up during holidays. So the kids were asking me today, you know, spring break starts Friday. When are y'all? We're off next. Yeah, we're Friday. Yeah, this whole following okay. week, yeah. So the kids are asking me, you know, we'll do a Monday, Wednesday, Friday run to where I'll send a message out and they'll meet me up there at noon and we'll do a quick clean. And then one o'clock, everybody's gone. Dang. Yeah. So they're, they're, uh, they, must, they must be dedicated. dedicated. Love what they're doing. Uh, to, I think the most break. I had. Yeah. The most I had during um, for the last break, which was Christmas one day, I had 28 kids. So, so that's they uh, enjoy. Oh, yeah. They're I mean, that's the, the biggest problem with, you know, the whole school system is we have to go inside. You know, we can't stay in the greenhouse all all day long because they don't want to go back in because they know they're going to be doing. Yeah, no, I gotta they're going to have to, they're going to have to listen to me <laughs> talk, or they're going to have to you know like I'm going in there. I'm like, hey, we're going to talk about diminishing returns today, and they're yeah. like, can't we just stay out here? Yeah. Like, no, well, you know, we have to kind of like you know do this learning process. Right. Yeah. I, everything can't be hands on. Um, but the you know switching back over those NFT systems that are on there will be a uh, will be an extension of uh, we discussed when I first got here will be our oyster or oyster tanks. So my plan is, um, I, I don't know if it's a, it's a confirmed thing or not, but we're going to try, uh, some of those gray snapper and even some flounder next year. So the flounder would be in the 400 gallon tank. And then the water from the flounder will go over the oysters. And then the oysters will do my filtration process. And then it will go back into the tank itself. Sweet. So that way the, um, it's kind of like a lot of them back in the day when we used to run big, uh, saltwater fish tanks for like uh, reefs and things like that. You build a a lava rock or an oyster shell type filter to where the water just runs down it, and it helps to break up everything and filter it all. Yeah. So, so you're, you're yeah, you're not using any type like when I think of like a real a regular fish tank and you run it through like a charcoal filter, you're not doing anything like that. Everything that's filtering your tanks is either plants or going to be oysters. Oysters, oysters or I'm not, I think I moved it. I had to get Sorry, some water. No, you're good. Sorry. I think we're back. We're, um, back. we're so back. We're so back. Um, and the only, well, the, I still have those nitrobacter and nitrosoma that are on like the spaghetti noodles. Okay. Um, the biomedia that's in the back of the tank that used to break that down. But my main filtration would be the oysters for the saltwater on that side. Um, I just ordered some 10 foot tanks 
and so those 10 foot tanks will be what will put the um the other fish in so i can grow out much larger um right now i got those um gulf coast research lab gave me a thousand uh speckle trout and a thousand of the red drums and so i got those they were microscopic they were less than an inch and uh you know we brought them in two big two of those big old school 60 white igloos that we yeah. used to have in high school and um i was like all right fine so we put them out and now some of them were seven eight inches wow and that was at the beginning of school so they grow extremely fast and so that's why i'm saying i have to stay on top of it because that you know it's kind of like i guess it's kind of like your house you know, you buy a house, you don't have any kids, just you and your wife, and then you have kids. They destroy and it. They and just, they get big. They yeah. get big. Yeah. And then they, you know, then they have friends over. Yeah. And before you know it, you know, it's Saturday football and there's 46 kids and yeah. 12 adults at your house. And now right. you move out. Right. You're like, you're like <laughs> whoa, whoa, I'm leaving. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, yeah, I'm leaving. And that's when depression. <laughs> yeah, that's when you realize you screwed up. Yeah, right. And so, uh, you know, as they get bigger, we have to stay on top of it more. Um, our biggest kicker this year has been um, broken airlines or um, issues with power. Uh, our last, we lost a whole tank of red drum because I had, because the students do all the work. I'm just kind of like the guy that walks around and we had two of the air systems plugged in the same outlet. And so when tripped that big it. storm came by, I guess a power surge hit one yeah. of those, tripped the GFI. And so their backup air and their air went out. Mm. And so we came into a, you know, a floating tank of red drum that Dang. were absolutely beautiful about, you know, yeah. seven inches that were just ready to be released. You know, when the kids looked at me and I was like, well, you fail. Sorry. <laughs> this is all your fault. Yeah, yeah, you and Mother you're Nature. Yeah. Um, and so I said, you know, it's part of the process. You know, I always explain to them that, you know, I crimped the hose on that. That was nine months of my work. Right. You know, that it was gone in eight minutes. Yeah. I said, it's 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 aquaculture. You know, there's yeah. nothing we can do about it. So now we have a secondary line that runs to the other side of the greenhouse. And that's where all of our back feed from the tanks come from. So that way we don't have to worry about the the total shutoff of all the air and go into it. I got another photo. It's going to show up here. Uh, just a different angle. It looks like you can see some of the tanks that you're talking okay. about. Yeah, that's fresh water. It's like big okay. swimming pool. Looking okay. Thing. And you, sorry, audio people. If you want to see these pictures, just go to the Ocean Springs High School CTE uh, yeah. Facebook page or, and scroll or, down. Are y'all on block over? In, we are on block. So you have four, three classes. I have three classes. Three classes. So I have, well, I have three classes and I have my um, year three students mixed into that. So oh, okay. like I have... Um, and it's through the work-based learning through the state. Right. Um, and so, like, my first block is year one. My second block is year two. I'm off third. And then fourth is year one. So then I have uh, nine total year three students, and they do an internship at the research lab. So, like, um, I got – they're split up now. I have three on algae, three on finfish, and three on oysters. So they'll go work those individual sections for a couple weeks and then switch to another one throughout the year. So the good, that's been really good because, uh, we've had four kids get hired. Um, so four of my students that went through me and then did year three internship at the lab, as soon as they graduated high school, they were hired and got a job directly into, uh, the field that they wanted. So, uh, 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 in, in aquaculture. Okay. So I had a guy, um, we'll go back with Steven yeah. um, Steven. and Steven, he's a busy cat. Yeah. And, uh, so Steven comes in and says, uh, in the beginning, you know, I want to be in aquaculture. And so I was like, Hey man, you know, let's do it. We did, he did his striped bass and then we did, uh, he did the speckled trout and then we switched and he said, I want to go to the research lab and I want to raise algae. And I'm like, dude, nobody wants to do that. So you are about <laughs> to be, just you're going to be so hot. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're going to be all over yes. this algae farmer. Yeah. And it's like, so basically the way the algae room works is there's like 7,000 plastic bags, like these bags that they tie, with algae bloom and water and everything in them. And they're different colors depending on how thick or whatever they are. And they're all hanging on this big wall of lights. And so like you walk in and that's it, you know, like <laughs> here it is. Here's, the algae. Here's your algae. Yeah. Like, I mean, what do you just play yeah. music? In right. Yeah. Right. I don't know. You're like, always oh, we John this morning, you know, yeah, we were in yeah. here just dancing, you know, yeah. my, for the longest time, my dad was there and he did uh rotifers. And so rotifers, when you're doing, the uh the freshly hatched fish you're doing your smallest one which is your copepods and then you switch to a rota vice versa whichever copepod then a rotifer and then you go to artemia and then after that they can start uh accepting pelleted or uh, flake not really a flake but more of a meal food so my dad was like that middle kind of guy and uh like he definitely he loved those rotifers and so they would just, just babies like, oh yeah and he 
do something and i like i bought him rotifer shirts because he was so excited about them fired <laughs> I'm up like dude they're just they're just you have to look at them under a microscope yeah you know? yeah there's not but he dug it there's not yeah. susan and sam and they're just swimming around yeah, you know and, tab uh, holes. it's not like you can tag them where where yeah. do where do y'all get y'all stock from uh it's all my big massive all my fish nursery? from uh saltwater stuff comes from dmr not dmr from gcrl they hatch um the fish there um you know you've been i think y'all did the tour have you done it it would have been Joey. Heather, Heather Heather's did, kids did Heather's it. Yes. did the tour. Yeah, yeah. So they have like these absolute hogs at the research lab, like some of the biggest trout you'll ever see in your life. Um, when I worked there, let's see, it's been, it's been about seven years since I was there. And um, they had, you know, they have these 25 foot tanks that just have trout swimming in circles, huge fish. And they um, went in one day and somebody hit the lights and they heard, you know, big bam. Yeah. 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 And one of the fish panicked and Killed swam itself. and hit the wall and it like floated down to the bottom. And, you know, they were like, ah, you know, maybe it's going to make it, maybe it's not. So it probably, you know, did some structural damage or whatever and ended up dying. Yeah. So we went in there and got it out and pulled it out. And it was like, it was almost a record. Wasn't it? Was like, it? No, it was way over. It was like 20, 20 pounds and 38 inches. Good Lord. It was like, God. like if you Did caught you that, a picture of that, uh, I it, remember it, seeing it. It yeah. was, it, so it was a paper or something somehow, like that. Yeah, wasn't it? Somehow it, uh, the picture got out or whatever. Yeah. And everybody's like new record, you know? And yeah. I was like, cats in the research lab, you know, it was just yeah. a, it was just a thing, but it's still on there. And I mean, it's, it was, its head was eight inches wide. It was the biggest trout I've ever seen in my wow. life. That's it crazy. broke Sparky dog's record by like, uh, Sparky eight plug. Pounds? Yeah. Like just, yeah. <laughs> like eight pounds. And, um, so they will give me all of my, uh, all of my speckled trout. And then the, um, I believe the redfish or the red drum are strip spawned. So they don't actually speckled trout are the only one that reproduce in, in captivity very well. So like the, that's kind of weird. Too. The speckled trout are just, they'll go in there some days and there'll be 2 million eggs, you know, and then they'll check the viability, you know, and how the eggs are doing. And then they'll put them up to stock them or they won't because they may get, you know, your first couple of days of the, the egg laying process, when they change the temperatures and set it all up, you know, the first ones are, eh, then they, you get more into it right in the middle. You're just like go time. Yeah. And then once you go, you're going, you know, so the run doesn't stop. It's a 24 hour cycle until you get them on a hard food, you know, pretty much people working. And then that's when I get them, you know, they mentioned to me getting them sooner. And I'm like, I don't have, you know, the bell rings at four. Yeah. I can't be like, you know, Hey, Keith's going to take the night, and, right? You know, stay night in the shift. greenhouse. Yeah. And work. yeah, yeah. We can't. You know, they can do that. They got kids living in the yeah, greenhouse. Yeah, and that's not good. That ain't good. They're yeah. sleeping in the gravel. Yeah, you know, yeah, just can't. Yeah. What and, day uh, is it? How yeah. many tomatoes do I have to eat <laughs> yeah. to survive? He's eating all your tomatoes. They're in there. Yeah. They're just covered in red. Yeah. You know, just, uh, and um, so it basically sets it up to where uh, you know, that we get the fish from them, and then we'll raise them, and then um, all the data we collect. You know, if they need it, we'll share it with them. We'll do whatever. But the main thing is, so the kids now are doing like an SAE or a Future Farmers of America, which we're a part of. Um, the SAE is a uh, supervised agriculture experience. And so we basically go on this program and enter all of their data onto it. And it holds data for the three years they're there. So they can actually go back and look from, you know, when they get their fish to their first weights and measures, second one, third one, fourth one, it'll have all their tagging information in there. So anytime they need to go back and access it, they can. Yeah. So like if I get that text from somebody that says, Hey, we caught zero zero one seven, um, which the furthest was probably 11 miles out, uh, in back part of Van Cleve, somewhere over there. Um, and that was 11 miles from the release site. So that fish swam, mm -hmm. you know, all the way out there and then was caught. Uh, and I'm of course eating, I'm sure, but, right. um, that would be the, the, you know, the freshwater side of it. And now we've never done the red drum the red drum this is our first year of the red drum project and to ever raise them to ever do red drum and yeah. they have done like phenomenal red drum are basically the tilapia of salt water yeah that's what they when you said that, that speckle trout are better in captivity than redfish usually the opposite you know you yeah just, i mean keeping them wise but yeah, yeah. Uh, reproduction wise i don't i don't think uh and somebody can correct me if i'm wrong i'm not positive on that one but i don't think the red drum reproduce in captivity uh the speckle trout do for sure yeah um but um the like the red drum are basically you know like thick skinned rocks yes. yeah they're bull yeah. yeah you yeah. can't you, you can't, can't hurt them, them. yeah and the only way you can hurt them of course is to take the oxygen away from them and that pretty much would do anybody <laughs> yeah else. yeah and that's so, a surefire way yeah so, so the uh the, the the fish are doing well we plan on doing a tagging session after we get back from spring break um they are a probably a half inch 
uh, spaghetti tag, as I call them, and they look like the T-shirt clips that you have. Yeah. So whenever you get that pack of socks and you're like, yeah, you like rip trying, it off. yeah and you, you, you know, Heather's in the background saying, don't rip your yeah, sock. You're going to put a hole in your brand new underwear. <laughs> don't rip your sock. Yeah. And you're like, I'll rip the sock. And you're like, you just yeah. it off of here. You could just cut it. It's right. a scissors right here. Right. And then what if I cut the toe off of it? Yeah. You know, yeah. Then I'm sitting there looking like, a, you know, like I don't have a toe. Yeah. And so it, 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 you cut that and then it goes in and spreads out and it holds on the fish. So we'll tag those fish a week and a half to two weeks before the actual release. So that way we can do tag retention to see how many of the tags are going to be successful because you don't want to, uh, you don't want to tag the fish the day you release them because when you do that, they're already stressed. You know, I got high school kids pulling them out of the water, yeah, shooting them with a gun, in the back, yeah. right, stick them in the back and then you throw them in a tank and you're like, good luck in surviving life. Right. <laughs> so it's easier to don't do it at the beginning. Yeah. And that way they have time to recover and then they're released. Right. And with the trout, you know, when we would do, the huge releases at the research lab. I mean, they were releasing sometimes 40, 50,000 trout at a time, but they were two inches, yeah. three inches, you know, whatever it may be. And so we would, you know, we'd have the gun and I'd be staying in the water. And of course my waders are leaking and my legs yeah, are soaking, soaking wet, wet and everything. And you're like, oh, man, this is so much fun. So you're just, you know, like shooting them out into the water. And all of a sudden you're like, you know, the yeah, birds right. are coming yeah, in. Yeah. And you're like, really? Right. And so they're just like diving. Swooping in. And yeah. the fish are sitting there. They're sitting at the top of the water. And they're like. Right. They don't know what a bird is. I don't is. know what a bird is. Yeah. They're like, you'll see that? And yeah. then it's like. Yeah. Done. Kind of like uh, one of my, you know, I got chickens at the house. We party with chickens all the time. And so I got these, these specialty chickens with like the big fruity hair on them. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, these are cool chickens. You know, they never laid an egg or did anything like that, but they were bottom of the barrel when it comes to instincts yeah so one of them sitting up there and i'm sitting on the front porch like talking to somebody on the phone and everything i looked at and i was like what is that chicken doing and it was just standing there like you know like doing its thing and all of a sudden this hawk was like Shoof. yeah never, never goodbye ne never flinched yeah the yeah, chicken just, was just sitting there just died pecking something on the ground and the hawk swooped it up bye that's circle yeah. of life yeah, yeah. and you're like you're like Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Hawk. I've Thanks been for... feeding that thing for the past. <laughs> yeah. see, uh, see, thanks for taking my chicken. Three Branded months. the chicken. Yeah. yeah. Way to go. That's terrible. Sweet. Well, where's your oysters coming from? They do uh, it on oysters? No, no. They'll be uh, they'll be something they grow with the uh, the brute stock yeah. for the brute stock. Uh, one of the ladies that does all of the the stuff on for my students, she does all the oyster training and everything like that. She's the one that'll give me the spat, and then we'll get the spat up to that point. We tried to do it this year. But the main problem is, is we didn't get the oysters before the fish. So I have to get the oysters in first, do an acclimation project to get uh, the fish, the oysters clear to make sure they don't have yeah. any outside sources of bacteria, any amelio, any uh, anything like that. And then I can bring the fish in after that. Well, they're, so they're, we got from what I hear, oysters are a pain in the butt, right? Well, you got to turn them. You got to. You got to. So mine would the the main reason for the turning in the in the aquaculture system there would be so they don't get any outside sources of oyster drillers yeah. or anything that connects to them in a closed system like mine, they wouldn't get any of that. So I technically don't have to turn them. Right. Uh, I'm still going to move them around to get them, you know, back and forth, but they won't be, cause you're never going to have with the way these troughs are set up, they're eight by five troughs. And so it's, it's eight foot long, you know, f four and a half, maybe five foot wide. You're not going to have the same flow around the whole thing. So the idea is to rotate, your stock to where they always have, you know, an adequate right. flow of water. So that way, um, even my daughter was telling me today that they brought in, it may have been some Deer Island oysters. They brought in a um, 10 gallon tank to her classroom with a bunch of seawater in it and said, you know, let's watch. And the oysters cleared it up, cleared it up in yeah. three hours. You know, that's what they do. And even if they don't eat those oysters, I mean, if they don't eat those, even if they're not eating everything, they still make a, a mucus plug out of that, silt or whatever it is and they just spit it out so they're filtering it and they're like you know it's like oh look canned tuna yeah, right. you know they're not going to eat that right and so they're just going to spit that out into it was a weird analogy yeah, for was. something okay. they're not going to eat because yeah. i was thinking how much how delicious real tuna is <laughs> yeah and then like if somebody gives me canned tuna you don't like that no right it's not no. the same thing That's i have a thing. i have a no can rule i want classroom. the real silt yeah, yeah. not the, not yeah. the fake so, silt. um nobody can open anything in a can that resembles any kind of meat. Okay. So like, have you ever seen a whole chicken in a can? Yes. Spam. That's disgusting. No spam. No spam. No, because oh. it just it just it just stays in there. Yeah. I've already got to smell fish and oysters all day. Yeah. Last thing I need to do is smell some potted you know, Vienna, so you're sausage. Vienna sausage though. That's, depends. That's Are you going to eat them? Are you just going to you going to eat that waxy thing off the top of it? 
Ugh. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna kick that out of there. Oh, you're gonna, oh gonna, come on, put, be real. Uh, no, I don't eat that stuff. But I'm gonna put it on a cracker. Barbecue. Put it on a cracker. You dude. like the barbecue Vienna sausage? I like the jalapeno one. Uh, oh. I, I, I can't. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just see. I like sardines. Maybe I, I love see, sardines. Okay, no, sardines. Yeah. I'm sardines. too Ocean Springs for that. Oh, yeah, that, that, makes makes yeah, that, makes that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. What uh, I live with one. <laughs> right. What is it like? You mentioned your different blocks with the different level of students. Year one, year two, three, whatever. Yeah. Year three. What is it like watching them come in? I, I mean, obviously they have an interest in it, right? They sign up for yeah. the class, right? But watching a year one go all the way to the end and learning just how important all this stuff is and kind of the, like joey said the circle yeah. of life right yeah how important each one of these steps are in the the process and then taking that information out and, and appreciating the gulf of mexico and yeah. what we have here well that, that's the main the main thing we talk about with aquaculture we just got done with one of our chapters that was uh, called diminishing returns and so diminishing turn basically explains to them that how much damage we actually do to the oceans and everything without realizing it mm -hmm. um so you say um let's say we go to a Seymour shrimp boil, right? Mm -hmm. So you boil, let's say an average 30 pounds of shrimp. That's a lot of shrimp. So I know it's a lot of shrimp, a yeah, lot but of shrimp. there's a lot of Seymours. Right. So, also you know, true. we're trying to, we're trying to get everybody together, <laughs> having one of those old school Ocean Springs versus St. Martin football right. fights. Right. Yes. yes, that's right. And, uh, you, um, Joey's playing. I'm playing partridges. Even there, you know. Yes. Right there. <laughs> okay. And so okay. Uh, it's like back at Becky Fader's house. Yeah. Twenty five yeah. years ago. Watch yes. his pancake, bro. Yeah. Watch yeah. his pancake. I, he bro. worked it in. That's talent. <laughs> you worked that into the show. Yeah. See, that is talent. He, you, he probably talked to Partridge about yeah. that. Partridge is probably sitting yeah. in his living room with yeah. his shirt off yes. right now. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um. And so you got me so the long. shrimp. The shrimp. Jerry Actually, shrimp. shrimp. Yeah. yeah shrimp so party. thirty pounds of shrimp. So for every pound of shrimp that you eat, five pounds of bycatch is killed. So like whenever oh, yeah. they whenever they take those shrimp up on the boat, the croaker, uh, obviously oh, yeah. the first fish, grab, yeah. yeah, the first grab is the shrimp, and then everything else just suffocates. That was my favorite part of picking. shrimping when I was a kid with my dad. It's a picking box was yeah. like you saw everything. Yeah, everything yeah. is right there. You know, and but I, and obviously I, you're you're killing a lot of stuff. Yeah, and so I always tell I always tell my students I'm like you got to think that they're not. Oh, he just texted us. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's been in the comments, yeah. too. Oh, is he? Yeah. He's he probably running around his own spring. <laughs> he said jersey. earlier, he said, I've never been more excited about growing fish than I am right now. Oh, see, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. That's my boy. Yeah. Um, and so so they, you take those fish, and I always try to explain to the kids, like, those those fishermen, they don't care about those crooker or those whatever. And I said, so basically, they're going to put them back in the water, but they're not going to be alive. Right. And so all of that stuff. And it's the same thing that goes for old crab traps. And it's the same thing that goes for... Um, you know, when Joey and I were talking previously about how the changes in the snapper leagues and, you know, everything that you can do with snapper and now snapper are bigger, mm -hmm. snapper are more abundant just because we had to cut that back. Right. Which doesn't mean that, um, you know, Keith's not going out and catching a whole bunch of snapper and hauling butt back to his house and not saying anything. You can't stop that. It's over capacity, open access, whatever you want to call it. And so I try to explain to them that everything they think about in the, the fishing world happens on one boat in one minute, in one day, and that happens 100,000 yeah. times a day. Mm -hmm. So I may show them a picture of a long fishing boat that has been out at sea for three years, and it's got a 56-foot-long net that is 10-foot wide, and the whole thing's full of uh, sea breams or mm -hmm. snapper or whatever it may be, and that's just one pull. Right. They may pull 15 times a day. Right. And so they just throw Kill all that yeah. into the boat, and they're like, you know, maybe we'll make – some Tony Satchery's out of it, or maybe we'll make filet of dog fish food or right, dog food. Right, yeah, right. There's right. so many things that it can go into. Uh, and I also explained to them how, you know, Worcestershire sauce is made, you know, Worcestershire yeah, was heard. a thing with like, they just threw a bunch of anchovies in a barrel with some red wine and some onions. And some cat was like, I'm going to check that in a week. And then like, that was pretty good. Some I kind know. of, some kind that's of way weird. to go, that's, Steven. That's no, weird. No, he went and tried it and he was like, this is absolutely disgusting. And so he's like, I'm not going to eat that. So he put all the lids back on the barrels and then like, some, I don't know, we'll call him Robbie. Right. Robbie comes back and checks it like a year later and was like, and he was like, oh my God, that's amazing. Well, that's, that's so now that's how situation. they do it. That's a weird I'm not saying it's aliens. Yeah. That's it's aliens. Weird. So that's you just, just telling weird. me this guy was like, you know yeah. what? I'm going to I'm going to taste what's in that barrel. Yeah. A year later. A year later. It probably I don't know smelled what the, like the gag of maggot is, but yeah, they, they cover the whole thing in salt and then they put it in a brown bottle and I just, and we put all it love it. it. You Everybody put it on your steaks. It. Yeah. You put it on your steaks I every don't. Friday night. I don't. You Some probably, people you do. probably my use wife one, don't you? I don't need none of that, but my wife does. <laughs> no. So, 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 so they, they so learn they, something. The so they start off, uh, so they start off in 
uh, you can tell I get sidetracked. That's okay. They start off in year one and I teach, I, you know, I don't teach like a normal class type thing. We learn as we go. We learn as processes. I explain everything to them. Everything we do, we start off with, you know, introduction of our culture, of course, why we do this. And then we'll move into water quality, we'll move into fish health. And as I've got it set up to, as we're going to run into these problems in the systems, we are discussing it in class. So they'll be able to see a real, real live application of, okay, we're on water quality. Your water is dirty. Your ammonia is high. This is this. Why? And they can answer it to me to say, well, we're talking about this right now. I probably have a built up of detritus on the bottom of my tank, or I have, um, I'm overfeeding, or I'm doing whatever it is to make this test run the way it is. And so then they build that into saltwater, and then they build that to their year three stuff. And by the time they get to the year three stuff, I've had, um, I have two students that are there now at the lab, and they came to me and said, hey, you know, I was talking with one of the uh, employees there, and we were going over some things, and he asked me some questions, and I started doing something. And he said, you know, like, what are you doing? And he said, she said, well, this is what we did in year one when I was in aquaculture. Mm. And so she can go back to that, that moment and remember it. And it's just second nature to where that will give them the increase of a, you know, a job or yeah. whatever field they want to go into. She did it without even thinking mm -hmm. to do the water quality check. She knew that she was looking for her dissolved oxygen. She knew she was checking ammonia. She was checking all those parameters that we always do without even being second nature because she has understood why we do it and what it causes and so they're just doing that. So that was your year one. And then your year one will transition, of course, to our saltwater fish. And then they do the internship there after that. And, and to me, that sounds like that benefits them regardless of, <clears throat> excuse me, if they go into aquaculture or not. My, my point being just the appreciation to, of going out on the water around here and understanding that whole yeah. cycle, right? Yeah. Whether, yeah. whether so, they work in that industry or not. Yes. And so the another thing we get into a lot is we build everything we have. So I um, am fortunate to get grants, as you know, and so we're working on a big new grant that will um, increase our tank size on the south walls and to be able to add some larger fish and things like that. But it is a every year the year ones build their aquaponics tables, whether it's a group of four girls, four boys, boy and a girl, whatever it may be. I give them a picture and I say, here is what we're looking for. Go. Okay. And so I, we do the, of course, safety classes and everything first, but I say, y'all are going to build this. I know you've never touched a Ooh, drill, yeah. touched a screw, touched mm. whatever it may be, but we're going to work through it. And so we take a full week for them to build every single piece of it. That one of those pictures you shared, they always come up with different ideas. So one of those pictures you shared is of a, um, a plastic barrel that two kids just cut in half. Mm -hmm. So they cut the barrel in half. That's what it looked like. To and me, yeah, too, yeah. And so they cut the barrel in half and they used it right as a, uh, a, a place to hold their plants. And so that's what they decided to do. There it is right there in the yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. So they take that mesh it off in the front to hold in all their gravel, their water and everything. And so the water flows over the back of that. And that's what they did. And some of the people will build a flat one. They may build one of a triangle. Yeah. Uh, you know, Just whatever it may be. And so whatever flows best for them is how they grow their plants. Now, these high school kids look a little bit small. <laughs> that I'm is, guessing yeah. that's not the yeah. fellas you have in your class. No, it was actually, y'all had like the preschool that was day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, but so that was like do, the best photos I found. Yeah, yeah. So, no, so, the people uh, were thinking like, I thought they said these were high school kids. <laughs> we do a tour. Uh, we do a ton of tours for the elementary schools. I feel like um, as, a, as a program at the high school, it is my job to give back everything I've got extra to them. Um, and the students enjoy it as well. Um, that was our, of course, preschool class. Mm -hmm. They come in and we catch some fish for them. We show them some stuff. You know, they're not going to eat any tomatoes, but, you know, all the uh, older kids always eat peppers and act like they're really hot. Yeah. You know, and we had one time where we were growing baskets of strawberries and I had a whole group of kindergarten kids come for like three days. So basically the first group of kindergartners ate every strawberry. Smashed every single, yeah. So I had to go and get like strawberry containers and just like set them up right, in the plants. Right, right, right. And I'm like, hey, you know, here you go. And they're like, whoa. You yeah. Know? And I'm like, there's these, no way. There's and, a plastic box yeah, in this yeah. plant. Yeah. Mr. Brian's a fraud. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that goes back to, you know, everybody always asks me with the aquaculture stuff, is there, there is a certified way that I could supply vegetables and things to the cafeteria at the high school. Right. And I said, there is absolutely no way that two greenhouses can keep up with exactly. the amount of stuff there. Exactly. Now, do I give stuff to chef, you know, to chef Lacoste, I give him stuff all the time. If we have like right now we're growing lettuces, we're growing, um, he took a whole bunch of fennel. 
somebody wanted to grow some fennel. You know, if you ever chew on fennel, it tastes like uh, black licorice. Uh, Weirdest mm. thing. And so, you know, the kids go over there and like, you know, they're like eating, it's like a, hearing the noise. Yeah. And so they go and eat that. And I went and go give it to him. You know, we've dried dill. We've done all those different things. And so I give him extra. He got a bunch of the tilapia whenever we had to uh, sacrifice them. And I give him stuff for that. But there was no way I would be able to support right. uh, the amount of food they go through there. Well, it's yeah, absolutely insane. You're I, talking I, about. You're talking about 1,800, 1,800 to 2,000 kids, kids eating a day. There. Yeah. 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 Well, again, though, hopefully that teaches kids what it takes to produce the amount of food that we that we oh, eat and, yeah. and to not waste, right? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? When you and understand that, that somebody had to grow that, that, that took energy. It took work and effort. I don't know if they're ever going to figure no, that out. They're like, yeah. it doesn't matter. Yeah. They just hand. get a tray and throw it in. Yeah. 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 Apple, yeah. Pff, I don't yeah. want this. Well, that, that brings up something that we talked about mentioning before, uh, before we went live. Um, you know, you mentioned it. Ocean Springs, y'all are y'all are fancy. Y'all like to be ahead yeah. of the curve. Y'all like yeah. to be OS is the best. Y'all do big things first, right? <laughs> but are y'all going to try to export that to the uh, to us uh, commoners over in Jackson County? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so thank my, you. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm doing it for you. It gives Max, back. Thanks. It gives back to less. I just wish. Right. I, I think it actually is going to be on the St. Martin campus. Is where is uh, when I was talking to Dr. Morgan about it. I believe it's going to be. Um, they're building a new CTE section over there or um i know it's not gonna be a van cleave because i've discussed it with them but it'll be a the same busing system uh to over to there and they will do the same fish um they can branch out you know a lot of the uh, i'm trying to talk to more of the other areas that aren't as close to the salt waters i am like um i spoke to somebody i've got a a school coming down uh mississippi school of math and science is coming uh, i got somebody from tupelo coming and uh where's the other one it's not Pontotoc. It's somewhere up in that area. Yeah. But I told them, I said, you could even do, um, you could order in and do brim. So brim grow a lot slower, so they don't produce as much nutrients. But if you take a lot of the load off of your aquaponic systems, it'll be able to support it. You know, instead of having 10 tomato plants like I do, you may be able to four. Yeah. You know, and so it'll be able to work that way. And then you grow these brim up to a good size. Brim are cheap. $20 yeah. for 100 of them. Yeah, we used to buy them when I was so a kid you, for our yeah. pond in my yard. $20 yeah. for 100 of them. Why we could turn that into a koi pond? Yeah, um, no, and, different house. It's no, all its way going. I know. Yeah. And so, uh, so you buy those fish, and then you grow them up to stocking size or edible or whatever. And then now, your person with a pond, let's say you can sell them for a dollar a piece. Mm. You know, and so then you say, "Hey, I know you were going to buy these hundred fish for twenty bucks, but how about I've got some that are." almost full grown right. and you can catch them on a hook with your grandkids tomorrow. Right. Yeah. And for, a dollar. Like, for a dollar. And now here's 50 of them. So you just made 30 bucks back for your program. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't necessarily do any of that, but a lot of the schools don't get the influx of money that we right. do on the coast. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You know, like the coast is just swimming in it. That's right. So any kind of aquaculture, <laughs> <laughs> any kind of aquaculture yeah. program or yeah. anything like that, you know, we can get the, the community outreach or the help or anything like that to get, you know, mostly what we need, and so we'll go to Jackson County. That one's in the works. Um, we're working on Pascagoula and we're working on some more, um, some more that way that haven't gotten approval or anything like that. But I'm hoping to be, my goal whenever we first started this was to be in uh, 10 schools by year five. And so we're not quite there, um, but we're going to be behind a little bit. But I also did run into COVID, so I'm going to use right. that as an excuse. Yeah, yeah. You and also so, work for, uh, for the, the school districts, which takes everything. Correct. Twice as long. And so the thing about it is I just want to have all of the students, the ability to be able to enjoy the program and to get involved with it and everything. Because not only back to our, our building discussion, I do for my year twos, I take a, we use like a UV sterilizer. Mm -hmm. So it's just a gigantic UV bulb and we build a, a housing um it hangs on the back of the tank and we run air through it and it pumps water and the water goes over that and all that. So when the year twos get in there, they have this huge pile of PVC pipe in one side of the room. And so I set the housing on a table and I say, all right, I want you to get out your rulers, get out your paper, get out your pencils. And I want you to draw that. And I want you to figure out what parts you need. I want you to figure out your measurements. I want you to figure out everything you're going to need. And then you bring it to me. If you want to do it with the, you know, the PVC snips, or if you want me to cut it on the chop saw, I'll do whatever. And I want you to build that. And your, your SAE project is for that to physically work. So a lot of them get involved with that. And then they decide that, um, you know, I want to be an engineer for uh, this company that does robotics. Right. Or I want to design this. Or I'm, so I get a lot of them that go into the engineering 
or the mechanical yeah. engineering and things like that after they do the aquaculture part. So it's not only a, a biology builder, but it is something that they can build on for many, many different careers. Well, you said that the kids like to be outside <clears throat> more in the, the, your aquaculture oh, in the shop. Stuff. They always want to be in the shop. Yeah. In the classroom. And I think that's like something that should be um, promoted, meaning like hands-on stuff. Just like you said, you're out there talking about aquaculture, but this kid's cutting and building stuff for your project, yeah. but realizes I'm not so much into the aquaculture part of it. I like building this stuff. So yeah. then that piques his interest in engineering or something Correct. like that, you know, Correct. versus you know, to him reading it in a book and being like, this is, yeah. 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 so this here's is how you put these another two PowerPoint, people. right? Yeah. Right. Or like the virtual PowerPoints where you're clicking on it, like building it on the computer. I mean, that doesn't do as compared to doing it yourself. And right. Then, so even if it is, um, ever, we all grow up with, we have friends that can't do any of the stuff that, you know, like, so something leaks under my sink, I can fix it, mm -hmm. you know, but I also have friends that can't. Right. So I'm trying to at least teach them, you know, to be able to do simple plumbing, to be able right. to take yeah. care of something with your like hands. that, right. Work with your you hands. know, and so they may, um, male or female, they may grow up and decide that they are living at the house and something happens and they need a quick fix and they can patch it right. until they can get some professional that has the experience to come in and do it. But they can at least get the water from spraying in their bathroom. Yeah, right. You right. know, they Turn will know. Yeah, they will know what to do and all the stuff to set it up. And that's the whole point of it. It's not. Um, and Joey can agree with me on this. It's not a. I need to get you through high school. It's I need to get you through life. Correct. Yeah. I need to get you prepared for whatever crosses your path. And if aquaculture is my vessel, we rolling. We sell. Yeah. We yeah. doing whatever we got to do to get you to that point where um, I've had students come through and decide that they want to be veterinarians right and so they can get an early entry program to the veterinary i've had students come through that decide they want to do marine biology they can get early entry to that so having that ct background is huge for them no matter what the course may be yeah um, i'm actually working on my uh dissertation and stuff now and it i'm doing it on the cte influence on graduation rates in the state of mississippi like so it. like let's say a student has mine or joey's class as a sophomore and they hate being there. They're like, you know, I would rather be anywhere than you, West Harrison, still? No, D'Ireville. So, D'Ireville. I hate being at D'Ireville. I don't even want to be here. Oh, look, I'm going to shop class. And so then Joey gets them started. Right. Today, they're making balsa wood lures. And so he's out there making lures, and he's like, oh, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, like, he wakes up in the morning. He's like, you know what? I'm going to make wait some to more lures. Class. Yeah. And so he may absolutely tank everything else he's doing. Right. But he's at school because of that. I have those. He stays. Uh, we, we everybody all do. has. Yeah. We do. And they are only there for Joey's class, or they're yeah. only there for me. So the increase rate is actually about um, – it's about 8 to 12 percent higher graduation rate of CTE That's concentrators. Yes, it's very significant, especially in your more rural areas, right. you know, up past Jackson, things like that, that there is not much else. And so instead of instead of going into um, going to straight to college, they may go work for that vehicle mechanics program they went through. They may go straight into a lot of programs such as mine, uh, Allied Health, a lot of the engineering things are no longer your finish a CTE program and go straight into the field because they won't hire you. You know, like you can't walk from the research lab and be like, I just graduated Mr. Butler's CT program. They'll be like, cool. <laughs> right. Yeah. Now you go know, to like, college. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> go to college and get but, an aquaculture like, degree. But like on my degrees, you can. Yes, uh, welding, yeah. pipe fitting, stuff like that. I mean, as soon as you walk across the stage, you know, yeah. get in there. And that's should Start be pr promoted more. Yeah. And, and I think the, the economics are also there too. I mean, people would work in trades are making good money. Nowadays, Tons. You, know? so you can't find oh, them. Yeah. Nobody right. wants to turn wrenches anymore. They're in demand. Well, we, we went really, really heavy and we've talked about it before. Everybody needed a degree. Everybody needed a degree. Nobody wants to do the little... The, uh, the the blue collar jobs, right? And then all of a sudden, now it's everybody wanted to be white collar. Now it's flip flop, yeah. but we don't have enough people to turn rich. Well, we've had uh, Mr. Bill L L was on the show. Yeah. Remember, uh, mm -hmm. and they did the same thing where they let students go kind of shadow what they think they want to do, and it doesn't have to be blue yeah. collar stuff. It could be accounting. They put them in a uh, program where they go shadow a CPA or accountant mm -hmm. firm, it, so that you don't go to college for a degree. Read about it, study about it, get the degree, and then get out in the real world and go, I don't like this. Yeah, you this know what sucks. I mean? So, so were you always going for education when you went to college? Absolutely not. Never even right. thought of it. So, like, remember, we had the pet store in Biloxi. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. So That's your background. I was yeah. gonna go. I was going to go to veterinary school. Well, actually, first I was going to do business. And so I got into business classes, and I was like, this is awful. Right. Like, I'm sitting here, and this lady's talking Economics. about business law and right. all this kind of stuff. And I was like... I don't even know how to balance my checkbook. Why am I in these <laughs> I classes? I got $6 in my account. Yeah. And so I was like, I'm more in the red right now 
like you know you write that check in college at Burger King and it bounces fifty seven yeah, times, right? And I just paid fourteen grand for a you know Whopper, yeah. And uh, true story by the way, yeah. And um, so I didn't like those classes, and I was like, okay, whatever. So I'll switch over to the biology aspect of it, and I got into biology, started some biology programs and all that kind of stuff, and then was like, uh, you know, this is this is what I was supposed to do, mm -hmm. but I didn't know where I wanted to take that career or that field and anything. So I actually got ready to finish my biology degree. And my wife was going to be there another year. And she was like, hey, you know, you're going to be here anyway. Why don't you just get your certification and teach? Kind of like an afterthought. Like, yeah. I was like, okay. And so I went through and um, I'll throw Partridge in there too. He's in the same boat as me. We both have elementary education degrees. So I did like a um, an elementary school classroom in South Pontotoc, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And um, I, it was like amazing. Like I was sitting up there, you know, reading uh, Indian in the paintbrush. Like we were making paintbrushes and making all these things. And I was super nerding out. Yeah. And it was like my favorite thing in the world. And I was like, this is what I need to do because yeah. I can just get out there and give them this, you know, everything I've got. And then they can come back and talk about it later. So now when I'm like lecturing in my classroom, I'll start on talking about something. A kid will raise his hand. And he's like, is this a story about the Pelican? And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, you can't get ahead of the story. Yeah, don't oh, really? the story. This is my Dude, moment. Yeah. Too. The yeah. kids talk about stories that I've told because there's this long uh, brown Pelican story. And I, Joey's heard it before, but we were at Sea Chick, which used to be a uh, tilapia farm in Escataba. And so the, the tilapia farm was there. And we had these problem with these brown Pelicans like flying in and just eating 7,000 tilapia and they were so fat they couldn't go away and so they would just hang out with us for like weeks at a time and so we're like you know what can we do you know you know whatever so um it's, they're still endangered at this time so yes. you can't really do anything to them so we're like you know what we'll cover all the ponds with nets right so then the um pelican flies down and it's like yeah and it gets caught in the net and drowns so that's absolutely pointless <laughs> yes so you know then we uh so we murdered this yeah, endangered you, species yeah, yeah. I, you just admitted to that by the way it's like a federal crime you just admitted 25 yeah. years ago i'm good yeah. oh, okay and, uh, yeah. Yeah. and so it gets worse and oh, so um then we decided like to do the boom thingies and you know that was just loud because every so often you just kind of shake yeah. because somebody's <sighs> boom you know so then uh this cat had like a uh, slingshot with marbles. Uh, and so good. we were supposed to like pop them, you know? So this young kid, I don't even remember his name. Like I said, it's 25 years ago. Was, Steve. was out there. Steve, yeah, it was Steve, Steve, Steve in this time. Right. And so Steve was up there and he was like, one of them was flying and he was like, Oh, Pelican. And he like pulled it in absolute headshot. First it time. Like, yeah, Mark, it was like, Jesus. He's yeah. probably an army sniper. No yeah. joke. And so <laughs> this Straight thing, special forces. This yeah. thing falls like 20,000 feet to the ground and lands. And it's like dead. Yeah. And I'm like, second federal crime. Steven, this is literally <laughs> illegal. Yeah. And I was like, we're going to have to call people about this. <laughs> we just you killed know? a rhino. Yeah. Steven, Steven yeah. like pulls a blade out. He's like, yeah. no, we're not. No, we're, we're not. not. <laughs> and so I know he, how to get rid of the body. Yeah. <laughs> and so we called everybody, you know, we went to the proper channels and all that kind of stuff. But it was, it was a thing to where you're like, what are you going to do? You yeah. know, and Steven was like, well, I'm, I'm not going to do anything. Yeah. And it's He's just, still scarred. From still that. scarred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still scarred. Right. And so the students are always like, you know, tell me that story or tell me another story because it's, you know, how'd you stop the Pelicans? I, 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 I went Gave to college. Up. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, yeah, so you got rid like, of them. Yeah. And <laughs> he so he moved on. I yeah. moved on. I Gave was up. Like, hey, yeah. good luck on those pelicans. Yeah. 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 Pelicans and so and they're now, still there. They're like right, 500 yeah. pounds. Yeah. The most obese pelicans there are in the world. Yeah. They can't fly yeah, anymore. They've turned wobble. into ostriches. And uh, <laughs> so that's when I said, you know, I want to do education or whatever it may be. And that's how we got started back to where we were. But I, you know, then my plan switched to I'm going to go to veterinary school so we could have butler's pets and butler's vets. Right. Oh, and, nice. You know, cheesy. Right. Yeah. 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 And then, of course, Katrina and everything else. So uh, I got home and started teaching biology and then switched into aquaculture and we rolling. Then you know, you never regretted it. No. no, no we were talking about that before we went live. Like, yeah. you're, you're one of the few people I know that, like, super love what they do every single yes. day. Oh, my job is so awesome. Yeah. Like, there's never – and the problem with a lot of the, the biology classes and the other classes, they're just absolute regurgitation. Right. You know, we may not know – okay, for example, today we're walking out to the greenhouses. They're probably – 75 yards from the school and there is a uh there's a snake in the ditch and one of the kids is like oh the snake's been there for four days and i'm like well obviously it's dead yeah <laughs> so let's go check it out and so i grabbed the grabbers or whatever and went over there and grabbed it and it was like Rah, you know started flailing all super over the place. alive yeah and i was like this thing's totally alive yeah. <laughs> and i was like why did it try to run away and it had gotten entangled in some kind of um string or mesh or some sort and it had actually constricted and 
crimped like half of its body, uh, um, whatever. And so it was, he was, just a, he was in bad shape. It was just a banded water snake. You know, not going to yeah. hurt anybody. It looks like a moccasin. More of those get their heads chopped off for yeah, whatever reason. I would kill it. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, that's terrible. So I don't know the difference. You know, you know I had snakes growing up. Yeah, you got to look at their lips. Uh, or their eyes. Keep going. Going. Yeah. Going. So you yeah. can see the, the line that goes up on the moccasin. I'm not talented the... enough to do that. I don't know. I just don't like it. You should snakes. learn. Yeah. I'm really not that afraid of snakes. Honestly, God, I'm really but not. I had, like, if I know, go around it, I don't, I don't believe I it. Had, uh, I had three of them growing up. And one of them, one of them I had in my classroom, and it died at 19. And they told me, you know, once that one dies, no more. Its name was Topanga. And uh, <laughs> so I kept that one. And then I found one that was the exact same size, exact same anything. You just put it right back just in. put it right back in there. That's and smart. They, and the Reincarnation. Kids like, the kids were like, it looks like it's a little bigger. I'm like, no, 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 no. no. Same, same thing. Yeah. So that one lived another nine years and died. I think it was 17 at that one. And uh, so it was. And then I was like, I'm going to get another one. They told me no more snakes. So, yeah. but I had, do you remember the big one I had? Mm -hmm, I had Mystic was a, uh, she was a 19 and a half foot albino Burmese python. Yeah. And we used to feed her two Whole pounds, three pounds rabbits, dogs. you know, and yeah. stuff like that. Uh, we had Dan in the comments earlier. He said, uh, thanks Dan for the comments that you, you put out there. He said before he retired, he was teaching uh, maritime pipe fitting uh, at MGCCC. And he had a hundred percent graduating class, uh, get job offers. So yeah. yeah. It says, uh, that's what it's anything all about. Hands hands on you can make a living if yeah. you can get them to work yeah like and, i tell the story all the time Ingles beat down my door shipyards beat down my door the main things you got to have a pulse yeah and you got to pass a drug test that's what kills a lot show of them up, man. yeah show, show up, up. yeah show up, show up. Gotta pass a drug and test. so i have mine that go that go out of our programs and they go um into what he's talking about there you know maybe it's pipe fitting maybe it's Ingles or whatever and they come back or i'll see them in rouses or whatever maybe yeah. i go to rouses like 15 times a day it's, <laughs> yeah you know i walk in and they're like hey you ready to start day and i'm like yeah. i'm here you know whatever and so they may be making 80, 100, yeah. some of them 130,000. Oh, yeah, yeah. 130, no you know, it takes Joey and I seven years to make that. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. so I just want them to succeed. And if it, it's going to that field, know you know, know seven yeah. years. <laughs> well, and you know, it's, it's, you obviously know this, but you have as a teacher what y'all do and the time that you're with these kids, that moment in their life, you have the, uh, a really good chance of, turning them one way or the other like in a positive direction Correct. whether like you said whether it's aquaculture specifically or something that's related like engineering that they see yeah. i remember back when i was in high school the like the class that really stuck with me the most believe it or not was the uh what did we call it? oral Theater. communications? Uh, <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, well, you but it kind of, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Doing, no, it was. And that's what we did. We produced the news show. Correct. Right. And then it was on the, shoes. If, if I had to what tell you, news, news on, on shoes. shoes. Yeah. If I had to tell you one class, we have GTV that, that was like, that I was like, this is what I should be doing. Yeah. Was that class. And I almost went to college for it, but I decided last minute and I did the medical thing, yeah. but like life is full circle. Now here we are doing this stuff. So Correct. I've done both now. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's just, it's it's an important part of those kids' lives, and I think you. But have. you don't want to do something that you get into, and you're like, I don't want to do this every day, right? And you know, like I, that's the thing with well, you know, back to the snake story, it's never never the same. So you know, I ran over there, grabbed the thing, picked the snake up. My whole class was around me. We took little scissors, cut the rope off, got him rehabilitated. You know, saved his life. it up, yeah, and put him back in the woods. Yeah, you know, whether a hawk picks him up in ten minutes, I don't right, know, yeah, but right. I, we gave him a full shot. So y'all so like planeteers, man. I don't You're know. Like Captain, Captain Planet. Captain Planet, yeah. And fire and water. <laughs> yes. And then we're all Heart. hanging our rings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Ocean Springs. <laughs> <laughs> but we didn't go that far. Yeah. You wanted to. I yeah, wanted to. Sure. Yeah, I would have totally sure. would have. What, if you're talking about these other programs that are, what what degree would they have to have to uh, teach It's that? actually, it, it changed. That's a whole other podcast. But I don't have an aquaculture degree. I have a biology degree with the certification because I started the program. But now they're requiring that you actually have an aquaculture degree to teach the aquaculture classes. Um, it's kind of like. Seems like you're going to narrow it down, right? It, you do. But a lot of them that are, it's kind of like being on the uh, the sector side to where they're doing all this aquaculture stuff. They're doing all this. You know, they're working uh, whatever hours they may be doing. They're on call. Uh, when I was at the research lab, they have um, triggers that will turn oxygen low oxygen and tanks they have yeah, power yeah, 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 yeah. And stuff yeah. Like so that, you're yeah. sitting there and you're the alarm's going off and you're like I mean, it's three o'clock in the morning you know and you're getting up and you're going to make sure the stock and everything is fine so they get away from that they may not make as much but they're getting away from that and they can be involved i in got you the kids lives yeah, you know yeah, yeah. like i i could go to jackson county you know and get to start over fresh do a new program and everything but my children are ocean springs right and so that would be you know, the most exciting to me, and I know Joey would be the same way, is my daughter's going to be there with me. Yeah. Right. And then, you know, so she'll go through high school and then 
three or four years later, my son will be there and he'll go through and I'll be there to do, you know, everything with them. Yeah, that's Kennedy cool. wanted to take aquaculture, but I told her she's going to have to take culinary because I'm trying to teach her how to cook and all that kind of stuff. So she, you know, we get home at night and I'm like, here, here's five chicken breasts. And what do you want to do? Yeah. And up. she's like, I'm going to go outside and grill it. Let's do it. And so she takes it outside, grills it, checks it, brings it back in. And I do the sides. I like so I'm teaching her how to do yeah. all that kind of stuff. Mine will be doing the same thing. She's either going to take mine or Heather's. She's going to be a teacher or a carpenter or one of the two. So. <laughs> She's got her bases covered. Yeah, so. yeah. they can't retake kindergarten. You know, so what, my wife. What do you think uh, just guesstimation ETA on the Jackson County one would be? Because uh, my said, son knew about it. I was telling said, you. Yeah, six yeah he already to a heard year. about it. So it's it must something must be happening. It's, it's in the works. I know they have to, they absolutely have to build a building. So that's going to be the biggest draw um, with anything going right now. You know how construction and planning and all that kind of stuff is. My my first buildings that I bought, uh, I got from a grant from the Department of Education, cost me about 75 a piece. Mm-hmm. And then the new ones that I just got built in 2021 cost me about 150 a piece. Jesus. So they had to be all of your your buildings and your greenhouses and everything have to be to code. So basically yeah. the greenhouse I have now can take full hurricane right. force winds. If the greenhouse is gone, we're gone. You know, basically it's another Katrina episode. So yeah. nobody cares anyway. Right. So they have, they have a, they have 50 pipes, uh, 54 inch pipes that are poured into four foot of concrete. And then another pipe inside of that pipe that's poured into concrete. And then it's all like bolted together. So they're not it's going the real anywhere. Deal. It's yeah. not like the yeah. thing you pop up in your backyard. No, from no, 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 it's no, real no. Deal so you could, Yeah. We've been, uh, there's no lights in them. And so whenever I have like an open house or something like that, we have to do something. So, I mean, I've been up running through the rafters, like running lights to put and like that. You can, yeah, they're not going anywhere. Yeah. Those four, those four inch pipes are sturdy as they can be. Yeah. And they're the, the benefit to that is they're taller than my other greenhouses. So they would be perfect for the, for the plants and everything, but they're so good to do with that saltwater stuff that that's what we've been doing with it. Well, I hope Sweet. it happens, man. I think it's yeah, y- y'all got y'all even got some swag too, right? Yeah, a little yeah. Swag and I see you have your. Uh, I can't get yeah. the shirt in there, but you have your shirt on. Oh. I have my shirt on. Yeah, oh, right. there we go. Oh, there it is. Yeah. And these yeah. are for sale, right? Yeah, we sell those every year. And I have one. I need, yeah. I need another one. Yeah. Can I buy that one? I mean, it's on me. You can't wear a large tall though. No, no, no I need an extra no. large. Yeah, I'll put one in. All right, um, sweet. And so, what it is is your medium. Yeah, yeah, medium, medium. And so. What I do with these, and it's one of my, another one of the favorite things I do, it's the way you incorporate uh, the younger kids and everything. So that design, these two that he has on, which one is the back of yours? Uh, I think it's the speckle drought. Okay, so that one um, was one that they came up with, the high school. These three that we have on here are high school designs, but I go through each one of the elementary schools and do, like right now I just finished Oak Park. So Oak Park has a student who draws their design. So Oak Park submits a design. Um, they submit, you know, 150 of them. And then my students pick which one they want. Okay. And then we put that on the back of a T-shirt. So that is the Oak Park edition of that shirt. I sell 400 of them between the high school and the Oak Park edition. And then I give back whatever my profits from it are to Oak Park. So Sweet. that way the kids know, hey, I'm doing this aquaculture thing. And then they come out and tour my class. And then they come see my class. And they know everything about it. So when they're in... Eighth, ninth, and tenth grade, they're thinking, "I'm going to get into aquaculture. Yeah. I'm going to right. do this." So this you're is you're recruiting do. in kindergarten oh, as right. hard as I can. Yeah, right. and that way they know exactly what the program is and what it does and everything that goes along with it. So that way they can make that decision uh, to take it. You know, and I I had to up my numbers because when I did the aquaculture expansion, you basically can't say, "Hey, I'm expanding to four greenhouses, but I'm going to keep the same number of kids." So now I've upped it to where I take. Uh, I think each one of my classes has 28. Dang, and so then class. it's 28, 28, 28. And then I have 10 in year three. So it's, uh, it's almost a hundred kids. It's, it's growing, man. You grew it from scratch. Yeah. Yeah. From scratch. And you know, there is one at Moss Point um, and the Moss Point program. He is more of focusing on the oysters. Um, he is directly by the water. He can bring all in that, uh, that aspect to it. He actually went. And if you're doing, the problem with mine is mixing the oysters with the fish. You can't do wild oysters with local fish. So I can't take fish that were raised in a greenhouse and then move them in with those oysters because either you're all wild or you're not. Mm -hmm. So like my kids can't go from greenhouse A to greenhouse B without showering or doing whatever. So they don't go in each other's greenhouse for biosecurity. So Mm -hmm. like at the research lab, you may be able to go into, um, 
you may be able to go into your Rotifer room or your Artemia room or whatever that may be, but then you can't go into Broodstock. Until you, and then you can't go into Broodstock. They have showers there. Yeah, and that's and just, just so you bring don't bring any clothes. bacteria. Yeah. From so one you don't the bring. One. Yeah. So let's say you're walking around outside and you step in foot baths, but if you go fishing, you can't come back in because what if you have something on you? Yeah. And yeah. you risk killing that beautiful. 7,000 pound trout that's been living right. there for four years. Right. So you can't, it's super secure can't on that. It. And it's the same way with me because technically you can go from freshwater to saltwater and it's not an issue, but you can't go salt to salt. So I tell my kids, you stay in this greenhouse during this block, you stay in this greenhouse. So basically what ends up happening is when they move to year two, all of my year, my first block kids are like all really good friends with each other. Mm -hmm. So all the kids from first block want to go to one greenhouse and all the kids uh, from fourth block want to go to a greenhouse. Yeah. So now they have their own greenhouse and then I actually let them choose, hey, do you want to grow, do you want to grow redfish or do you want to grow speckled trout? And so they pick. And so one greenhouse is speckled trout, one greenhouse is redfish. So that way you don't have to worry about mixing the two. But if I get the oysters, then I can go ahead and incorporate the fish after the oysters are clear. That's cool. Sweet, so man. you can't, yeah, because you can't basically move fresh water to salt water, but you can do back and forth. There's really no true bacteria that are in salt water that can affect fresh water. Yeah. Cause if you have, um, you can take fish, let's say to make your fish tank ready, you can soak a saltwater fish in fresh water for 15 to 20 seconds. And a lot of that, um, bacteria Slime, or whatever yeah. it is will jump off and that'll be a purification, you know, to clean them, or you can take fresh water and throw them in salt water for a minute. It doesn't last as long because then they'll, you know, you got to be careful with it. <laughs> they'll but, die. You know, yeah, they'll <laughs> die. But you can do it and everything will, whatever's on them, let's say you have like an isopod or whatever it is, will panic mm -hmm. and jump, jump off. off. Yeah. Because in, in a tank environment, the reason we are so concerned with all of these different parasites is so let's say your fish is swimming out in the ocean or the Gulf of Mexico and it has a parasite on it. And so that parasite will feed off that fish for a little bit, jump off, and then it may not find another fish. You know, so it's like, oh, man, that's a terrible move on my part. Yeah, right? And so it dies. But in a tank, the fish is swimming around. The isopod jumps off and it jumps up and it's like, snap, another fish, another right. fish, another fish. Right. And then it starts reproducing. Yeah. And it just goes crazy. So in the wild, it really doesn't affect them. But in a closed environment like we have, it's huge. Yeah. yeah. You know, so you have problem. to keep make sure that you keep all that stuff set up and uh, taken care of. Yeah, Sweet. dude, I love what you're doing. We talk about yeah. on the show all the time, conservation. Uh, we have people on here, you know, uh, the the speckled truth guys. We've talked to them yeah. about, you know, changing the the mindset of people not doing meat hauls and just destroying Correct. all the fish. I mean, the uh, what what it looks like here now in our uh, the 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 Gulf of Mexico compared to what it was, just say like in the 50s and 60s, uh, right? Obviously, we've overfished yeah. and changed stuff. Oysters are gone, snappers gone, right? And that has to have an effect on you know the environment, yeah. obviously. So it's cool that you're teaching these kids that stuff. And just, they and can not, appreciate you know, that. they keep they keep talking about all the different things and how it's set up. If you say, you know, I don't even know the true statistics of it, and the you know the super timers or whatever, I almost said big timers there. You know, nah, back in back in the day. Big Anyway, Back, you yeah. know, a little money symbol at the end. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's, they talk Cash about money. how it would be, you know, we're going to be out of fish in the Gulf of Mexico. So we have basically outfished everything that we're doing up until this point. So if you go back and that's one of the diminishing returns thing I talked to my kids about. So there's seven different signs that we can tell that, you know, our fish are in trouble. So in 1982, um, you could just walk out of your back porch, sling a pole, catch a big old fish. Hey, nice. You right. Know? Yeah. Now we have to fish for it. Right, right. You know, same thing with tuna, same thing with everything. They would go um, on the intercoastal and just be able to catch cod. Mm -hmm. You know, they would fill their boat with cod and get bored, you know, and now there's people fishing for cod all day if they're doing it on a pole, you know, whatever. And so it's the problem is that we keep taking all of these fish out of the water and then we're, we're in the, you know, we're pelagic. Mm -hmm. And then we're like, yeah, we'll go a little bit lower. And then you go a little bit lower. And maybe we're good. Then now we're catching the fish, you know, with six eyes that's on the bottom of the water. Yeah. And we're just grinding him up and throwing him in whatever we can. Yeah. And so eventually we're going to run out of the reproduction because we're catching swordfish that haven't had time to mature. Right. So, but the, the, that amazing. goes, that goes back to the problem of Joey, you, you know, all of us being conservationists to where I see that swordfish right there. And I'm like, that's a little under, you right. know, yeah. like he Put needs to reproduce. Right. And then the mindset. Thing. Yeah. And then some cat from, Gulf Shores comes through and it's like, yeah, yeah. and He's catches going him the wall. Yeah. and he eats him. Yeah. So that fish hasn't had time to reproduce. And that is our major issue because that's all we're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, you may go out, you may be able to go out in your boat and be like, Hey, I'm going to catch my quota in swordfish in 12 hours. 
but the same guy goes out and just catches the same weight limit, just like eight more, but he's catching smaller swordfish. Mm -hmm. And so we're taking all of the stock before they even have any time to reproduce. And that's going to end up what ends up biting us. Yeah. yeah. Cause they're going to, you know, you're going to say, there's no way with our population. I've actually got a, you know, you can go to like the world clock and watch it go. Mm -hmm. And my students were sitting there when I'm doing the discussion, everything, it's kind of in the corner mm -hmm. and it's just rolling. And they're like, you know, I'm, that's the biggest problem, world population. Right. Because we are, as a species, growing so fast and eating so ourself. much food yeah. right. that we're not going to, you know, it's going to be like that. Um, what was that movie um, with the little robot guy, uh, Wally? Uh, it's going to oh, be like, yeah, Wally, yeah, we're yeah. going to trash this joint, you yeah, know? Yeah, we can't. And there's it. nothing, I'm not, I don't think it'll happen within, of course, our lifetime, but sure, our children's, Yeah, you know? Yeah. Eat ourselves out of house and home. In 1980, they were everywhere. And then in 2020, 2000, they were less. And then right. 2020, there's even less. We talk about it. Outboard motors, you know, are better. People have more access. Technology. More people on the water. Oh, technology. Yeah. Fish scope. monitors. Everything. And you can look yeah. at the fish before you catch it. Yeah. Absolutely. It's crazy. No, so. no. And no, nobody likes to be told that you can't do something or put any type of restrictions on something that's fun as Correct. fishing. But you got to have you gotta it. You got to have so. it. Yeah. Dude, thanks for coming in and talking Absolutely. with us. Thanks for the, running yeah. the program that you're doing. I hate that it yeah. took so long to get you back in. But it's a great. It, yeah, that, that was a lot really of progress. Goes, that really goes so fast, doesn't it? When yeah. Sit oh, yeah. Everybody says that. Was that an hour and a half? Hour and 25 nice yes nice. what can we uh the ct i'm sure has a page it does it does it's just uh ocean springs ct career technology education it's on facebook um it's you know it's or there or wherever and it's got an instagram got all that and that's where all the photos from all of our programs you know we have yeah, yeah. just like uh diarville we have 11 programs that run like absolutely amazing it's so good to have you know yeah. things like that and teachers that are dedicated to their craft and it's fun yeah now are you all active on there like to answer questions oh, yeah. or anything like yeah. that yeah Yep. Yeah. And, and then that's the, the t-shirts, you where you order them from, you have to get them through you or is it yeah, on the page yeah, it's, as well? It's on the page, but the sales are over for now. Yeah. Uh, I started again. I'll be at, um, I'll be at Magnolia Park next fall. And then I'll be at uh, one of the other elementary schools after that. So I just rotate between all of them to make sure I knock them all out and then yeah. get them back together. So if awesome. you want a shirt, look out for them next year. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Dude, let us know. Keep us in the loop on anything you're doing. Well, well I'll always. get you too because, I mean, the orders are closed, but I'll, I'll snag some on there. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Only tanks, though. Yeah, that's it. That's all <laughs> we wanted. Yeah, only tanks. Out. I wanted a shimmel shirt. Yeah. Uh, I have that, some of those. That's why, I have to get, that's why I have to get large talls because none of the other ones, if you wash them, I'm straight belly button. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, right. it's, yeah. It is beautiful, but, I mean, I can't. Yeah. You know? Oh, God. J Jonathan said, uh, great job. Great job. Yeah, Thanks, Partridge. Thanks, Partridge. We appreciate you tuning in. Thanks, everybody, for the comments. He should have I said he should have come with me. He should have. Should we could have talked about some <clears> things. <throat> missed you know? opportunity. It would have definitely been tangents. Oh, no, no, yeah. you think it would have been? It would have gotten tough. No, it would have been good. It would have oh, been yeah. great. Yeah, it'd have been great. We talk about all those times I got ran over in football. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you worked one in though, so that was good. That yeah, was I good. did. I did. I, could, I used to get pancakes so much; it was so bad. <laughs> and then good. we'd yell at them about how good we were, and I'm like, I'm really not that good. Uh, <laughs> we've we known this guy for a long time, yeah, ladies and yeah, gentlemen. Thirty years. No, yeah. So thanks everybody for the comments on the live, watching on the replays, and in the podcast, man. We appreciate y'all. Absolutely. Check us out on the app, Brownwater Banter app on Google Play and uh, the app store it's free download it Lamy Electric so, uh, there are sponsors for it yep. a lot of cool stuff inside of it uh, tails and scales Absolutely. a lot of uh, weather charts and all that kind of stuff in a, in a radio station as well so we'll see